July 1962, a Soviet whaling ship was exploring the Bering Sea in northeast Siberia when they spotted a group of large, weird-looking animals about 80 to 100 meters away. The animals swam very slowly, diving for short periods of time. Their skin was dark, the head was small, and the upper lip overhung the lower one. The animal's tail shocked the whalers because it was bordered by a strange filamentous fringe. The crew unanimously agreed that the animals did not belong to any marine mammal they had ever seen before. The Academy of Sciences of the Soviet Union claimed this was Stellar's sea cow, a large marine mammal that was hunted to extinction 200 years earlier. Did this Soviet whaling ship really come across a herd of sea cows that somehow survived extinction? To unravel this mystery, we'll need to take a look at clues left behind all the way from the Ice Age woolly mammoths up to the surprising connection of the world's smallest marine mammal and the role they played in the disappearance of the stellar sea cow. I'm KP, a marine biologist who specializes in marine mammals. Stellar sea cows were fully aquatic herbivores related to dugong and manatees. But unlike dugong and manatees who live in warm tropics, stellar sea cow was highly adapted to the cold North Pacific. One of these adaptations was the sea cow's immense size, around 10 meters in length and weighing 11 tons, which is bigger than an adult male killer whale. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Another adaptation to the cold was an extremely dense layer of blubber and very thick skin. Because their skin and blubber was so substantial, sea cows were positively buoyant, meaning they were unable to dive or fully submerge like manatees and dugong can. Instead, they bobbed around grazing on the surface canopy of kelp forests. It's believed that they couldn't reach food that was more than a meter or around three feet deep. Supposedly, they even floated on their backs when they slept, just like sea otters. Now that's what I want to see. This is the first clue that the Russian whalers didn't see stellar sea cow, because the report clearly states that the animals periodically dived for a short time. Diving was physically impossible for stellar sea cow. Another clue is where the mysterious animals were spotted near Cape Navarin. Fossil records show this was once part of Stellar Sea Cow historic range, but by 1741, their range had severely contracted to the shallow seas around the Commander Islands, 800 kilometers or 500 miles south of Cape Navarin. And their numbers had shrunk to a fraction of their once large population, with some estimates putting them at a maximum of 2,000 individuals. To understand what happened, we need to go back to the end of the last ice age and what's known as the late Pleistocene extinctions. This massive extinction event saw 65% of the world's megafauna disappear. Animals like the Siberian rhinoceros, saber-toothed cats, short-faced bears, and woolly mammoths all went extinct because of a combination of climate change and the spread of early humans. I really love the uh, megafauna and I miss them. The woolly mammoth is of particular interest because their decline mirrors that of stellar sea cow. As global temperatures rose at the end of the ice age, major ice sheets retreated, causing a reduction in cold, dry, open habitats suitable for mammoths. As a result, populations contracted until only a few were left on Wrangell Island in the Bering Sea. This small herd of mammoths managed to survive until about 4,000 years ago when early humans found them and put the final nail in the coffin. A similar thing happened to the stellar sea cow. Shifting ice caps and melting glaciers of the late Pleistocene resulted in rising sea levels, which decreased the number of shallow kelp forests and suitable feeding grounds for the sea cows. This fragmented and decreased sea cow populations until only a small number remained on the Commander Islands. Scientists extracted DNA from bone material and sequenced the sea cow genome. They found the genetic diversity of sea cows was extremely low and nearly identical to the last woolly mammoths on Wrangell Island. This suggests that like mammoths, stellar sea cow had already largely disappeared and the small relic population that remained was, spoiler alert, extremely vulnerable to human hunters. As marine biologist Colm Roberts put it, stellar sea cow was an extinction waiting to happen. Quick note on the late Pleistocene extinctions, because I know climate change deniers will flood the comments with Climate has always changed, it's out of our control, nothing we can do about it. That's how you sound. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yes, global temperatures rose at the end of the last ice age by about 3 degrees over around 5,000 years. 
Today, the world has warmed two degrees over the last 100 years. So it's not that the climate doesn't change, it's the rate at which it changes that's the problem. The rate is getting faster. That's, that's bad. I don't know if you can edit out snark or if it stays in. Snark, 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 there it stays in. Great. It's a great spot for snark. <laughs> we also know why the Earth warmed during the end of the last ice age, and it was because of a rise in atmospheric greenhouse gases. Anyway. Now, almost everything we know about the physiology and behavior of the sea cows comes from the journals of naturalist George Wilhelm Steller, who was part of the largest exploration enterprise in history, Russia's Great Northern Expedition. Setting sail from the Kamchatka Peninsula, this expedition mapped most of the Arctic coast of Siberia and parts of North American coastline. In November 1741, Steller's ship was battered by storms and wrecked on the Commander Islands. Most of his crewmates died. The rest were stranded and forced to winter on islands that were home to several animals previously unknown to Europeans, including the spectacled cormorant, Steller's sea cow, and this is where sea otters come in. From November 1741 until the summer of 1742, Steller and the survivors ate spectacled cormorant eggs. They trapped sea otters and gambled with their pelts, and they harpooned sea cows for their meat and blubber. Sea cows were easy targets for the starving crew because they were large, slow-moving animals who were unable to dive. There was literally nowhere they could hide. Almost a year after being shipwrecked, the weather finally improved. 46 survivors built a boat from the wreckage and sailed back to Siberia in August 1742. They brought with them over 1,000 sea otter pelts. Sea otters have the thickest fur in the animal kingdom. Their pelts were immediately considered the finest in the world and were so valuable they were nicknamed soft gold. This set off the Great Hunt, also known as the fur trade. Maritime fur traders looking for sea otter pelts would detour to the Commander Islands just to hunt stellar sea cows and restock their food supplies. Sea cows were massively and wastefully overexploited, being hunted at over seven times the sustainable limit. Just 27 years after George Wilhelm Steller first laid eyes on the sea cow, they were gone. But it isn't that simple. A recent study found the sea cow would have still gone extinct even if not a single sea cow had been killed directly by humans. And it's because sea cows depended on sea otters. Sea otters are a keystone species, which are animals that play a vital role in maintaining the structure of their ecosystems, just like a keystone in an arch. While the keystone is under the least pressure, the entire arch will collapse without it, which is exactly what happened to the kelp forests of the Commander Islands. This graph shows kelp density before the decline of the sea otters and after. This is because sea otters prey on sea urchins, who are the dominant marine herbivore. Without sea otters to keep them in check, a herd of sea urchins will eat kelp until there's nothing left, turning vibrant ecosystems into underwater deserts known as urchin barrens. Between 1743 and 1753, a reported 8,226 sea otters were harvested from the Commander Islands alone. This led to an explosion of sea urchins and urchin barrens, eliminating the kelp forests that were the sea cow's only source of food. Without sea otters, the sea cows began to starve. Using our knowledge of sea otter kelp forest interactions in the nearby western Aleutian Islands and data on the behavioral responses of dugongs to food reduction, we show that sea cows around Bering Island would have reached near or complete extinction without any loss of sea cows to human hunting. Human hunting clearly occurred and may have been largely responsible for the sea cow decline at Bering Island. However, our analysis suggests that the sea cow's extinction was a nearly inevitable consequence of the loss of sea otters and kelp forests. And this is another big clue as to why the animal encountered by Soviet whalers in 1962 was not Steller's sea cow. Because there were no sea otters. The fur trade began in 1741 and lasted until 1903. By the end, there were only one to 2,000 sea otters in pockets of their former range, and sea otters would have gone extinct if not for the Treaty for the Preservation and Protection of Fur Seals signed in 1911. Now, translocation and recovery programs began in the 1950s and were wildly successful, but that's still 200 years without healthy kelp forests capable of sustaining a stellar sea cow. There's also something called the Minimum Viable Population, or MVP. Minimum viable population is the smallest possible size at which a species can survive without going extinct from natural disasters, environmental changes, or just chance. This population needs to be breeding in the same geographic area. 
Historically, biologists use the 50 by 500 rule that says a minimum population of 50 is necessary to combat inbreeding, while 500 are needed to reduce genetic drift. So in order for a single stellar sea cow to be alive today, there would need to be hundreds of adult sea cows breeding year after year for the last 250 years in areas that lost sea otters and kelp forests because they were heavily exploited during the maritime fur trade. And those waters are still exploited by commercial fishing to this day. But if it wasn't stellar sea cow, what did the Soviets encounter in 1962? These men worked in the whaling industry and agreed that the animal didn't look like any marine mammal that they'd ever laid eyes on. But it also clearly didn't look like stellar sea cow. The report notes that the tails were bordered by a filamentous fringe. In reality, a sea cow fluke was shaped like whales and dolphins and dugongs. And we also know sea cows couldn't dive like the report describes. The head was small. The upper lip appeared to be split and overhang the lower one. And among existing marine mammals of the Northern Pacific Ocean, no animal is known that has these characteristics. Eh, but that's not true. There is one the northern elephant seal. Their heads are small compared to their massive bodies. Males have a famous proboscis that overhangs over the lower jaw. And check out the hind flippers of Neil the seal. They look filamentous, don't they? Worth noting, Neil the seal is a southern elephant seal. I know there's a difference. The Soviet crew had probably never seen an elephant seal before because Cape Navarin is outside their normal range. But elephant seals are highly migratory. Some have been recorded traveling over 13,000 miles in a single year. That's 20,000 kilometers for my metric friends. Elephant seals have been spotted as far east as the Sea of Japan and a few recently established haul-out sites on the Commander Islands. I think it's highly likely that most of the reported sightings of stellar sea cow were misidentified elephant seals. There is little doubt that stellar sea cow is extinct. So is another animal that George Steller discovered on the Commander Islands during Russia's Great Northern Expedition, the spectacled cormorant. And Steller sea lion, Steller's eider, Steller sea eagle are all threatened and vulnerable. As for sea otters, their recovery is considered one of the greatest success stories in marine conservation. Sea otters have regained much of their historic range and kelp forests were covered along with them but they are still listed as an endangered species by the IUCN and recovery efforts continue to this day. If you want to get involved or learn more about sea otter recovery programs, I've linked a bunch of resources down in the descriptions.